So you want to create a large document. This is going to be a professional document that's going to look, look great and going to have a number of uh, complex features to it. Uh, at the outset, you want to do some very important things. Uh, first of all, you want to approach things as much as possible in an automated fashion. So the less manual effort you can do, the better. Uh, obviously, you need to write your document, and that is through your own creation, your own research. But there are several features within Microsoft Word that can make some of the more advanced uh, presentation elements much easier. So we'll kick this off with styles. Styles are a built-in piece of Microsoft Word. They've probably been staring you in the face the entire time. So you'll notice here I've got a styles pane and it's listing several styles for me. By simply clicking these options here or using some keyboard shortcut keys on the PC it's control alt 1 for heading 1, 2 for heading 2, and 3 for heading 3. So you notice either through the menu or through these keyboard shortcut keys I can quickly and efficiently apply levels of heading. Headings uh, tell the reader what the hierarchy of information is from the, the biggest umbrella uh, element of information down to drilling into uh, more and more uh, fine grained detail. Beyond just the look and feel of the document, uh, there's another important element. So this is a professional document and it's going to be a large document. So we're not talking about um, a two-page paper. Uh, we're going to be talking about a 50-page document, 100-page document, 1,000-page document, something with a good deal of content. Um, and we want to have a official table of contents. Well, for such a large document, the last thing we want to do is manually manage creation and editing of this table of contents that would really be a time-consuming endeavor. So uh, let's leverage the built-in features of Microsoft Word. I've applied these headings. Now if I go to References, I have an option for Table of Contents. And instead of choosing these defaults, I'm actually going to go down and say Insert Table of Contents. At this stage, I'm actually going to make a purposeful mistake, and I'm going to hit OK. Voila! I have my table of contents. It's actually even indenting them in based on the level of heading that I've applied. So I'll do a few more things. So this is going to be level 2, level 3, and technically this production process will be level 4. There isn't a keyboard shortcut by default, but you can apply that keyboard shortcut whenever you want. Here, however, from my drop-down, I'll see that Heading 4 is available. And once I've applied Heading 4, we'll notice that Heading 5 becomes available. And if I apply Heading 5, 6, etc., etc. So now I've got four levels of heading. Well, if I come to my table of contents, you'll notice a couple things. One, it's not a dynamic table of contents. The second I apply a heading, it's not automatically placing that into my table of contents. Okay, so that's a key thing. Uh, so how do I update it? I can simply right-click on my table of contents. I can go to Update Field. I'll be prompted with two things, either page numbers only, which you can figure out, or entire table. Uh, if I have new content and want to bring that into my table of contents, I must choose Update the Entire Table. I hit OK, but I've got the level 1, 2, 3. My level 4 is not appearing, even though I have applied a style. So what's the problem? I mentioned earlier that I had made a purposeful mistake, and that is to help you identify if you're creating a table of contents and content is not showing up that you, you think should be showing up. Um, how do we diagnose this? Well, I'm actually going to, at this stage, because it's easy enough, I'm going to delete my table of contents and recreate it. References, table of contents, not using one of the, the automatic one. I'm going to go down now to the insert table of contents option at the bottom. And here, under General, you notice I have a Show Levels. It defaults to three. So I can increase this to however many levels of heading I need. In a complex document, you might have five, six levels of heading, something like that. Um, I'm going to just simply boost this up to the maximum, which is levels of nine. I hit OK. 
And now I've got my table of contents, and it's reflecting that fourth level. So beyond a table of contents, what else does the, the feature of styles offer? Well, as we could see, we could very quickly apply formatting. And if I am in a professional document, there might be some changes at the end of the, the day. Maybe uh, I'm going to change a color, uh, font, etc. Rather than hunt and peck through my document and manually change headings, if I am very disciplined and use these headings, I can quickly update the, the formatting. So I can come up here, uh, right-clicking any of these options, I can go to Modify, or if I want to bring up the pane, you notice that the bottom corner of the styles, I can bring up the styles pane. So clicking that gives me more uh, accessible drop-down. From here, I can choose the drop-down or right-click on it, Modify. It's very simple. I can choose to change the color, increase the font size, and do much more. Now, there are even more uh, features available than the shortcuts. Um, here, I can dive into even more font options, um, changing different effects. Here, if you've ever been stumped by the fact that there is white spacing um, a before or after your styles and you want to adjust that, if you go to Paragraph, you'll notice the before and after spacing is listed. This is providing a good deal of white space beforehand, and I can either accept that, change it, modify it, or bring it down to zero if I want to use the enter key or the return key and manually space everything. Hit OK, and it's applied. Every instance I choose, though, like I'll come into 2, modify this, um, make it simply blue or black, excuse me, and not only that instance, but every version that I had is automatically changed in my document. That's very nice and easy, and it's very helpful. Now, speaking of styles, there are technically nine levels of heading. I'm only seeing five. Well, if I want to see this and potentially other styles that are available, I need to make an adjustment in this document. So at the bottoms of this pane, again, I get to it by clicking from the styles area in the ribbon. If I click on this, I can show the styles window. I click options. Instead of showing recommended, what I want to do is say all styles. Show me everything. Then, it, this is very important as well, instead of listing them as recommended, go alphabetical. This way it'll be very easy to find. Uh, I find it very difficult in the other recommended way to find uh, the specific style I'm looking for. It's alphabetical, it's in an easy list, I know where to find it. The headings will be under H. I hit OK. All of the elements are listed, including now all of the levels of heading. Very easy. So that's styles really quickly, and we will dive in deeper to other features of your document.